Yes, candidates, greetings to you, all of you. I uh, hope you are doing well at home and you are protecting yourselves against this coronavirus. Make sure, don't forget, uh, washing your hands regularly, uh, practice social distance, and uh, avoid crowds. Uh, I'm by no Mr. Silva, who's going to take you through uh, this simple topic. Uh, but before we talk about that simple topic, uh, I expect you to note the following at the end of the lesson. I expect you to do the following. One, I expect you uh, to define post-independence Africa. Also, you state founders of OAU. Then lastly, you mention reasons why OAU was formed. Therefore, let us go back to our topic, which is post-independence Africa. Uh, when we talk about post-independence Africa, what do we mean? Uh, we mean the period when African countries were free from colonial rule. Now, after being free from colonial rule, what happened? There was a need for, the, for those countries to unite and develop politically, socially, and economically. And that one wouldn't be achieved without an association that would unite them. Therefore, one organization was formed uh, to unite those countries. Uh, and which organization was that? Uh, it was called OAU. And how do you write OAU in full? It is Organization of African Unity. So uh, this OAU was an association of independent African states. So all countries that were independent are the ones that were supposed to be members of that association. So one qualification for a candidate to be a member was, be, uh, was being independent. Uh, before it was formed, of course, a meeting was first held in Ethiopia, which is the capital, uh, uh, in the capital city of Ethiopia, which was uh, Addis Ababa. In that meeting, that's where it was agreed that an association would be formed. And that, 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 that meeting was chaired by a man we call uh, Emprahel Selassie. It's well written here. Don't forget to know the spelling Emprahel Selassie of Ethiopia. He's the one who called and chaired that meeting. And what name was given that meeting? It was Addis Ababa Conference. So from that meeting, uh, OAU was formed. But he is not the only person who played the big role in, uh, in the formation of that organization. Here, we look at the presidents uh, who spearheaded the formation of OAU. So apart from Emperor Selassie, we have Dr. Kwame Kuruma, that is from Ghana, then Julius Nyerere of Tanzania, which is our neighbor in the south. When I talk, when I talk of the neighbor in the south, I mean a country that borders Uganda in the south. Yes, uh, let us look at uh, the formation of OAU. We say it was formed uh, on 5th May 1963 by leaders of all independent countries. And how many were those countries? They were only 32. So uh, let us look at, uh, let us talk about those leaders by their names and countries they are coming from. One is Dr. Milton Obote from Uganda. That is our own, which means we had a representative uh, on, uh, in the meeting uh, that is the formation of OAU. Two, we have Julius Nyerere of Tanzania, uh, Kenneth Kaunda of Zambia. You must note the correct spellings of these people. For example, Kenneth, we see N. Dowering. So take note of that. Then we have Heir Selassie of Ethiopia. Then we have uh, Kamuz Banda of Malawi, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah of Ghana. This name, Nkrumah, has a big challenge. Most of you, I know you are going to face it, uh, uh, face it hot with it. For example, most of you, you like putting letter uh, U after K, which is wrong. It is like Nkrumah. 
which means uh, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Make sure you note that one when you are writing your notes. Uh, next is Robert Sengo, that was from Senegal, Abdel Nasser from Egypt, uh, Jomo Kenyatta from Kenya, Habat Maga from Benin, then King Hassan from Morocco. Uh, these two, I have something I'll tell you about Habat Maga and King Hassan. The, the way they are very special compared to the rest of these personalities we have talked about. Now, how is this man uh, very special? We call Habat Maga. Uh, after the formation of, of that association we have, told, we have called OAU, uh, is the one who proposed the name OAU. In other words, Organization of African Unity. So, it is like the one who named it. I'm referring to a person we call Herbert Maga. He was from Benin, and Benin is the current name of, uh, of, uh, of uh, is the current name of uh, other country we call Dahomey. Which means the former name of Benin is Dahomey. So, I know you'll be meeting this question that how is Herbert Maga uh, important, or how did he contribute toward the formation of OAU? Here, question is, you will be saying, uh, he proposed the name OAU. Then we come to King Hassan of Morocco. My concern is in the, this word, uh, that country, Morocco. Uh, that country, Morocco, first became a member of OAU, then later withdrew its membership. Basing on a simple reason, uh, which reason is that uh, because, uh, it withdrew because uh, OAU recognized the Western Sahara as a member state. And what was so wrong with the, with the, with the Western Sahara? Western Sahara, uh, this country we call Morocco, claimed Western Sahara to be part of it, to be its, its territory. Therefore, after, after, after OAU recognizing uh, Western Sahara as its member, it annoyed Morocco. Then it had to withdraw. Therefore, the reason is very simple, that OAU recognized Western Sahara as a member state of OAU, which annoyed Morocco and had to withdraw. But I think uh, their conflicts were resolved, and later this Morocco rejoined in 20. 17. Therefore, today, Morocco, again, is a member of, of African Union. Yes, members, let us also look at countries uh, that started OAU. Don't forget the number of them. They are 32 in number. And which countries were those? The independent ones by 1963. So here they are. I know you are good at reading, uh, and make sure uh, you write them very well. Yes, we are looking at the reasons for the formation of our AU. Of course, those nationalists, those strong people talked about, the Nelson, uh, uh, the, the Emperor Silasi, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, uh, Julius Nyerere, our own Dr. Dr. Arbat, Dr. Milton Obote, had reasons as to why they wanted to form an organization that would unite them. Here they are. We are going to read through. One was to defend the independence of African countries. They wanted to make sure that countries which are already independent don't lose their independence. In other words, they are not controlled again. They are not, they are not colonized again by European superpowers. Two. Uh, to promote unity among African states, to make sure all countries in Africa work together towards a common goal. Next, to improve uh, the standards of living of Africans, uh, to promote international cooperation, to preserve human rights, and also uh, to promote peace and security. So, learners, uh, uh, I wanted to share with you uh, that information, but here is an activity which you must answer very well uh, and run your work.
make sure you work, make sure you write neatly. Then when we meet again, I do the marking. But here are the questions. You say, write in full or AU. Which African, uh, which African country had the headquarters of or AU? Which countries qualified to be members of OAU? And our number four, name the founder, president of OAU, who was from Uganda. Then number five, state one role played by Herbert Maga towards the formation of OAU. Hope you remember what I told you, what this man did toward the formation of OAU. So make sure it is well written here on our number five. Then number six, Give two ways Emperor Harry Selassie contributed to the formation of OAU. So make sure you write very well and then your work, then uh, you hand in when we meet. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>